Um, thanks, Alan, for the kind introduction. So today I'm going to talk about electrode accelerating distributed protocols with eBPF. This is joint work among Harvard, Peking, and Cornell University. So cloud applications need distributed consensus protocols for high availability. For example, Apache Kafka, Hadoop, Kubernetes use consensus protocols provided by Zookeeper or Acid to tolerate machine failures. Basically, when more requests comes, it will get broadcasted and executed on multiple machines, such that when some, fa some machine fail, other machines can still provide services. And in this talk, we will specifically look at how to accelerate consensus protocol implementations for these cloud applications. So here we will show an example of a simplified multi plexus consensus protocol with five replicas in failure-free cases. Uh, note that we target in-memory data replication on these five machines. In multi plexus there will be one leader and four followers. The, the client sends a request to the leader, and the leader will um, first broadcast the preparation messages to all followers. Each follower will log the preparation message and send an act message back. Once the leader receives enough number of acts, or the so-called wait-down quorum, um, it can start processing the client request and finally commit the message and respond back to the client. So unfortunately, even for these failure-free cases, these consensus protocols generally incur a lot of overhead. In this example, intuitively, we can see the leader node needs to invoke networking APIs 14 times per, uh, per each request. So in fact, multi as protocol incur high kernel overheads when implemented using the widely used kernel networking stack in the cloud. Here we try to show where the kernel overhead comes from. On the leader node, Paxos pro protocol run as a user space process, while the networking stack and NIC driver run in the kernel space to access NIC hardware. From CPU profiling, we found that around 19% of CPU time is spent on user kernel contact switching. And another 25% is spent on traversing the kernel networking stack. This is because kernel stack tends to be heavyweight, implementing many networking layers, functionalities, and features. Overall, the leader node will spend around 44% of CPU on the kernel. So this kernel overhead will squeeze the CPU time that application um, operations can use, significantly slowing down application performance. So well, how about kernel bypassing? Um, does this solve all the problems? We think the answer is no. For example, the representative technique is DBDK that moves networking stack to user space and uses busy pooling instead of uh, cost interrupt handling. This will give you good performance as it bypasses a heavyweight kernel and avoids contact switching. However, kernel bypassing, you know, it tends to cause security and isolation vulnerabilities because application code may corrupt network stacks and can directly manipulate the NIC hardware. Moreover, it is not cloud friendly because the busy pooling discourages CPU sharing among many applications in the same server. Finally, incur high maintenance overhead as you need to maintain your own networking stack in the user space and make it compatible with others that may use kernel networking stack. Therefore, we think kernel bypassing is not a panacea. OK, let's state at high level and ask what we really want. Basically, kernel and kernel bypassing are two extreme directions of building cloud applications. We want the security, isolation, cloud-friendly part of the kernel while desiring the performance part of the kernel bypassing. So can we kind of achieve both? The answer is yes, in the direction we adopt. That is, let's customize existing kernel based on application needs to reduce kernel overhead. This can give us the same level of security isolation as the kernel approach and possibly medium to high level of performance as long as we can remove some kernel overhead. Well, kernel customization for application is not a brand new idea. Spain and Axel Kernel did it long time ago for their homemade kernels. And the recent XRP system modified existing kernel to accelerate storage applications. But Electra will demonstrate that this idea is still possible and beneficial for more than widely deployed kernels without any code, kernel code modifications or rebooting. So currently, we target UDP-based applications inside data centers with reliable and fast networks. OK, so in the rest of the talk, I will first present our high-level methodology of kernel customization and how we tackle with challenges we face here. Then I will talk about how Electro designs three customization for Paxos. Finally, I will show the evaluation results. 
Our key technique as shown in the title is to leverage eBPF to customize existing kernel and accelerate Paxos implementation. Basically, eBPF is a mechanism to offload customized functions in an existing kernel at runtime in a safe way. It achieves the security using static verification for offloaded functions. As shown in this diagram, eBPF mechanism may allow us to offload our Paxos operations or run our Paxos operations in lower layer of the kernel, thus avoiding most of the kernel overhead, for example, connect switching and heavyweight stack traversing. This would give us good performance, and more importantly, it is secure, absolutely well, because it is a safe kernel native mechanism. It is cloud friendly without busy pooling and reuses existing kernel networking stack. So here is a bit more background on eBPF. It was commonly used for simple networking functions such as packet filtering, monitoring, load balancing, etc. And in the existing kernel networking stack, an eBPF program can be offloaded or attached to two hook points to quickly process and forward packets. One is called the TC, which is a uh, kernel exposed hook point. Another is XDP, which is NIC vendor exposed hook point. They only process ingress packet, but more efficiently than TC. So now, in Electro, we are using eBPF along with TC and XDP for application functions. So I'm going to show that this is indeed po possible um, as a common package message is usually small enough to fit a single packet. Therefore, we could possibly leverage eBPF to customize Paxos message processing, just like customizing normal packet processing. However, there are challenges of processing Paxos messages in eBPF, mostly because eBPF program model is really constrained, as the eBPF code must go through a strict static verification to guarantee their kernel safety. This means limiting number of instruction, boundary loops, only static memory allocations for eBPF. More practically, it becomes challenging to support complex pointer arithmetics if you want to do really complex memory accesses. Given this strict constraint and the complex Paxos protocols, we can hardly run all Paxos operations in the kernel. Therefore, the challenge now becomes what's the right division of labor between user and kernel that can greatly reduce kernel overhead while being implementable in the eBPF for offloaded operations. To address this challenge, our design principle is to put performance, critical, and simple Paxos operations to the kernel, while complex ones we just leave to the user space. More concretely, in the multi Paxos example we showed previously, we found that message broadcasting, acknowledging, and waiting on call room actually dominate the number of contact switching and stack traversing. But these operations are relatively fixed and easy ones to run in eBPF. In contrast, if you look at the client side, there are many highly customized and complex operations. For example, client-facing serialization and deserialization normally need complex point arithmetics to parse application payload. Application operations usually use dynamic memory location to maintain their data structures. Finally, handling failure and message loss are challenging to pass the static verification because of the high complexity they have in Paxos protocol. Thus, we put them in the user space. OK, just a quick summary. Um, in the first half of the talk, I talk about our methodology of reducing kernel overhead, that is, leveraging eBPF to safely customize existing kernel at the runtime. And to make a right division of labor, we try to offload performance critical and simple operations to the kernel. So next, I will talk about how we realize this offer for Paxos. As mentioned previously, our first offload is about the massive broadcasting. This operation is costly because the number of contact switching and the stack traversing is linear to the number of replicas. In our previous example, it requires four send function calls to broadcast the preprint message to all followers. Instead, Electro offloads such message broadcasting in TC using a built-in eBPF function that can clone and modify packets. As shown in the right diagram, now, the user space packages only need to call the send function once, while the eBPF program at TC will do the actual broadcasting. This will only incur one time of contact switching and upper stack traversing, significantly reducing kernel overhead. However, you might think of one tricky part here is that how could we handle message loss, since now the broadcasting is done below the transport layer. Well, I've designed to let user space trigger a timeout and resend the lost message again without doing complex message retransmission in the kernel. 
This design explores the fact that packet losses are really unlikely events in modern data centers, especially for these small packet messages. OK, after preparation broadcasting, packets follow will log the messages and acknowledge back to the leader. This is performance critical because the follower needs to receive and send one message for each log appending operations on the critical path, which means twice the kernel latency on the Paxos critical path. Instead, Electro does fast acknowledging in HTTP. Basically, it will use the HTTP hook to buffer log entries in the driver layer and quickly acknowledge back. As shown in the right diagram, after receiving the preparation message, the eBPI program at XTP will append the log entry to an internal ring buffer and then immediately send back the ACK message. This will remove the kernel latency from the critical path. While at the same time, in the user space, the Paxos program asynchronously pulls the log entries in batches and processes them, amortizing kernel context switching overhead. And finally, um, the EBBI program will detect any special cases such as message loss, ring buffer full, and forward to user space to handle them. OK, after acknowledging, the leader node needs to receive acts from all followers, and each of that act will incur one timer kernel overhead. In our example, the leader node needs to call receive function four times to collect all acts, even for those acts that do not actually reach quorum. So to remove this overhead, Electron maintains Quorum information in HTTP and implements with on quorum there. In the di right diagram, the eBBI program in the driver layer counts how many acts it has received and only forward the quorum reaching act to the um, user space packets. This offload will fill out unnecessary acts and only allow the quorum reaching act to incur kernel overhead. In more details, we actually use a bit set instead of counter to avoid um, double counting caused by message retransmission. Finally, um, I want to highlight a little bit on the state synchronization challenge in Electrode, which is kind of general to any eBPF co-designed applications. The difficulty here is that there's no shared memory between eBPF and user space due to kernel safety. These two entities can only communicate by copying data back and forth. For example, the eBPF program in the kernel maintains packs of state such as next sequence number, while the, uh, when the message gets reordered, the user space will handle it and modify the states. However, as there's no shared memory between these two, we cannot use mutex or other synchronization primitives to synchronize state accesses. So to address this problem, Electro Design is to, let, is to di disallow eBPI program from accessing these states by using um, two type of approaches. One is detaching the eBPI program from the kernel. Another is using the, e uh, the eBPF map, which is essentially a key value store-like um, data structure in eBPF as an off switch to decide whether the program should be triggered or not. But due to time limit, you can check our paper for more details on this part. OK, um, I just talked about the three kernel customizations we made in uh, Electro, including broadcasting, fast acting, and waiting on quorum, all beneath the kernel networking stack to reduce kernel overhead. Next, we'll look at how this design performs. We tested on two workloads, one is the multi packs protocol, Another is a transactional replicated key store, store on top of this protocol. For metrics, we vary the number of clients and measure the throughput latency and CPU realizations. We did our experiment on bare metal machines in Cloud Lab without any modification to the Linux OS and Manox Nix. And especially, we do not use IP multicast that requires special support from the switches, and Cloud Lab does not support either. So this figure compares the low latency curve of Electro versus the vanilla Linux kernel stack. X axis shows the throughput, while Y axis shows the request tail latency. Overall, Electro improved the multi packs throughput by 2x while reducing the tail latency by 20%. The big improvements come from that Electro reduces the 14 times of contact switching and stack traversing to only five times for each Paxos request. On the seven replicas, Electro achieved even more throughput improvement and tail relation reduction. But I guess you would be most interested in how Electro compared with DBDK-based kernel bypassing approach. We did that comparison, and Electro can achieve near half performance of DBDK-based one. The gap exists because some hard offload operations in Electro still involve kernel overhead, such as processing client requests. Besides this, uh, eBPI itself cannot beat DBDK because of its interrupt-driven nature. 
Um, but essentially, Electro was designed to be kernel native to enjoy the nice property from widely available kernels. There are more results in the paper, including CPU resource, uh, CPU usage reduction, so do check it out. And to summarize, in this talk, um, we show that consensus protocols on the kernel stack suffer from high kernel overhead. We then design a set of eBPF-based kernel customizations to reduce such overhead without any kernel mod code modifications or rebooting. Our evaluation demonstrates that Electro can, can bring substantial performance benefits for classic multi access protocol. Finally, from high level between kernel and kernel bypassing to build cloud applications, Electro calls for a third direction, that is kernel customization for applications. With this, I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>